guys do it. Because we don't feel the need to, Charlie. That's all. So if you felt the need to, you would kill someone tonight? Look, I know this is difficult to understand at your age, but tonight allows people a release for all the hatred and violence and aggression that they keep up inside them, okay? And yes, if your mother and I were so inclined, uh, we would participate because it works. You don't remember how bad it was, Charlie, the poverty, all the crime. This night saved our country. While The Purge has a lot of problems, which I talked about in my review, it's got some interesting social and political commentary that I think is directed right at Republicans' faces. That's because the night of The Purge, when all laws and law enforcement are suspended and murder is legal for 12 hours, is rooted and executed based on the failed dogma of conservative ideology, and the results, predictably, aren't pretty. The concept of the purge, which was created by politicians calling themselves the New Founding Fathers, is based on several beliefs that strike me as distinctly conservative. The first is that people are inherently and inescapably violent and hateful, and that lots of them are ready to kill you. Second is that justifies anyone and everyone arming themselves to the teeth in case they need to execute someone based on a personal, legal, or religious-based concept of justice. Third is that by arming and isolating yourself, preferably being white and most importantly being wealthy, you can and deserve to seal yourself off from the suffering of the poor, unfortunate, and brown. As you probably guessed, none of this turns out to be true, starting with that last one. As the violence escalates, Ethan Hawke's character James says what we've heard so many times after a grisly murder or yet another mass shooting, that this sort of thing isn't supposed to happen here. Not that it shouldn't be happening anywhere, but it should be happening to someone somewhere else, which also implies that those people expect it or maybe deserve it. As we hear a TV reporter say, purge killings happen primarily in poorer minority neighborhoods where people can't afford expensive security systems like the ones James sells. And yes, there is a slight racial element to the movie, with the fact that the masked killers are all white and the man they're chasing is black. But the weirdo's obsession with the veteran seems to have more to do with class, and that's where the shots at conservatives really come into focus. The head weirdo, played by Reese Wakefield, looks and sounds like he's right out of the Young Republicans, or more accurately, the Mitt Romney campaign. There's a lot of religious and patriotic grandstanding, and of course using God and country to justify the most repugnant cruelty. The head weirdo tries to relate to James as being, quote, one of our own, assuming that means white and or affluent, and tries to reassure James that the veteran he's harboring is a, quote, non-contributing member of society, most likely one of the 47%, as Mitt Romney would say, or a taker if you're Paul Ryan or one of his Ayn Rand worshipping fellow Republicans, which is essentially all of them. There's a question in the film if the purge is meant to exercise the sin of rage and violence within us all, or if it's for the more affluent who can afford bigger guns and better protection to purge society of whoever they think is unneeded or undesirable. Do I think Republicans think the poor, homeless, and defenseless, especially if they're brown, deserve to die? Well, yes, especially if they're outside the womb. All you have to do is look at Republicans' long record of opposition to programs that improve and prolong the lives and health of the less fortunate, like universal health care, food stamps, school lunches, hate crime legislation, unemployment and pollution restrictions, just to name a few. And it seems Republicans believe that if you aren't able to save your own life, you should do the honorable thing and just die instead of being a drain on taxpayers. But the purge attacks conservatives from another direction, showing that it's really hard to let someone suffer and die in front of you, regardless of their supposed sins. That no matter how well you arm, barricade, and isolate yourself, tragedy and the suffering of your fellow citizens will ultimately reach you. That you can't trust everyone to responsibly use lethal force. That when you say that it's everyone for themselves, it not only means that no one is coming to help you, but that you shouldn't help other people. And while a lot of Republican gun nuts like to brag about how armed and ready they are to kill when there's a race war, a societal collapse, or someone tries to take their guns, The Purge shows that killing another human, even a masked psychopath, is terrifying, rarely heroic or cool, and inevitably changes you forever. As you can see, there's a lot going on in The Purge, way more than I expected. And while I'm a bit torn on whether to recommend you see it, I can at least say that I definitely keep on thinking about it. I'm Jonathan Kim, and this is a Rethink Review.